Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is out in theaters, sequel to the 2018 film directed again by James Wan, starring again Jason Momoa, Patrick Wilson, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Ab Amber Heard, uh, Nicole Kidman, Randall Park, Temuera Morrison and Dolph Lundgren. Now, listen guys, last year or even the year before that, DC loudly announced that their existing cinematic universe was finally coming to an end and would be soon rebooted by James Gunn. So when Shazam 2 came out in spring, I thought, and I think I said it in my review even, this is the final movie in the old universe. And then a couple of months later, The Flash came out and I said, okay, my bad, but actually this is the final film in the old universe. And then and the next one will be a reboot. But then a couple months later, after that, Blue Beetle comes out and I was like, fuck me, okay, surely this is the last movie. And now Aquaman comes out and apparently this is the final one, but at this point, I don't even know for sure. It's all just confusing to announce that a franchise is effectively somewhat dead because they're resetting it completely and nothing matters even, nothing even matters anymore. And then still have four movies come out in that franchise in a single year. Anyway, the film reunites us with Aquaman. Uh, he's now splitting his time between three things, being an ocean-based uh, vigilante superhero who fights pirates and saves innocent lives, He's also a father to an infant child, and he's also the king of Atlantis, which turns out to be more boring and bureaucratic than you'd expect. But Aquaman's old enemy, Black Manta, who I think was in the first film, but I cannot remember what his deal was um, back then. I want to say he was a mercenary with an aquatic suit of armor who was just paid to kill Aquaman, but honestly, it's all a blur. Uh, anyway, he's back. He wants revenge for... Aquaman killing his father, but he intends to do it, uh, to exact that revenge, by using a magical trident which is possessed by the soul of this movie's version of Sauron, who wants Black Manta to release him back into the world. So, to put things very shortly, this is a film that will be thoroughly enjoyed by three groups of people and hated by everyone else. And these three groups of people are eight-year-olds, drunk people watching it ironically with their mates for fun, and Fast and Furious fans. Because even though story-wise the movie ends up ripping Thor The Dark World beat for beat, uh, it's actually spiritually closer to Fast and Furious, uh, mostly in the sense that it doesn't make any sense. The story is fucking awful, uh, the dialogue sucks, the amount of times a load of exposition is just dropped on the audience is astounding. The main plot involves the bad guy using a refinery to burn toxic fuel in order to release massive amounts of hydrocarbons into the atmosphere and heating up the planet quickly. Which, first of all, isn't how a refinery works. Uh, secondly, the solution is for the Atlanteans to bomb the place and explode all that fuel. Guys, exploding a thing is like just burning it faster. Uh, you've done the same thing, just quicker. How does that solve the problem? Uh, also, having Black Manta be possessed, I think, cheapens the whole thing. I mean, it would have been simpler if he was just out for revenge without an additional supernatural world-ending threat, especially as that threat is ripped from Blood of the Rings and World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, it's also really strangely funny how Amber Heard's role as Meta is clearly minimized, uh, especially in the first and second uh, acts of the film. You kind of wonder why is she not involved in these scenes? You have all these scenes of Aquaman taking care of his son and she's nowhere to be seen and it's like, where is she? But at the same time, she is still there. Uh, she's still here in the film. She has some key scenes in it, uh, which makes it clear that the studio didn't want to commit and, uh, and have her be a prominent character again, but they also didn't want to commit and, and just fire and write her out completely, which I find strange. Uh, I mean, she is a controversial figure now and by all accounts an awful person, so just pick one. Either you don't give a shit about that and you stick with her and keep her important, or you fire her on principle and just don't try to do both halfway. Uh, Jason Momoa is no longer pretending to play a character in this film, he's, he's just a parody of himself uh, with all the woohoos and shit. And I like the guy, he's charismatic, but it gets tiring. 
Patrick Wilson, on the other hand, is actually really great and much better than the film deserves. Uh, and also his character arc is easily the only good thing about the movie. Uh, and I have to say, I, lo I just lost it completely when he did the Naruto run through the jungle. It was hilarious physical comedy right there. Uh, I didn't like how the Atlantis society was portrayed. It's essentially just genetic sci-fi setting with spandex suits and laser guns and submarine spaceships. It looks generic as shit. And especially after seeing it done so differently in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, it was just boring. I also have to say that the costume design is horrendous. I mean, Black Manta is apparently comic book accurate, but he looks fucking goofy nonetheless. And I laughed rather loudly at how in the second act, suddenly his evil guy lair looks exactly like an evil guy lair. And how all his employees suddenly wear these hilarious black leather suits, which makes them look like Death Star employees. I was like, at some point he had to tell them, guys, from now on we're all wearing these, and they accepted. And I was like, how much is he paying them? I mean, let's be fair, it, none of it makes any sense, not at all. Uh, it's just a bad movie. And I also realized at the end that it doesn't even really have a message or a character arc. Aquaman's big thing at the very end is that he announces, like like Black Panther at the end of his first movie, he announces that he's opening up, up Atlantis to the world, but it's something he wants to do at the very beginning of the film as well, so it's not like an example of character growth or anything. Uh, there is no lesson to be learned or moral to, to be had, it's just bad guys to be beaten. It's a bad film all around, uh, but I will admit I laughed quite, quite a lot at it, uh, although mostly at things that the filmmakers probably didn't intend to be funny. And with that done, I can now say with relative confidence that the old DC Cinematic Universe is finally over.